If you rollerbladed in the mid 90s, like I did, you'll probably be familiar with the name J. Dick. Between 1995, 1996, even part of 1997, J. Dick was absolutely everywhere. He had a substantial amount of footage in so many videos, including Suitable Material, Nickel and Dime, Quest for the Holy Rail, and most notably, Hoax 3, Broken English. In Quest for the Holy Rail, J. Dick has the weird honour of being the very first person I've ever seen grind an escalator. It like it was going and then it stopped. I think I broke it. Having personally been inspired by that to grind an escalator myself, I can speak from experience that those sharp pointy steps really know how to cut through your skin. As well as absolutely slaughtering numerous rails in that video, we also get an insight into Jay's home life where he's got a bunch of holes in his bedroom wall and he just shoves a grain pole in there and slides down it on his socks. When it's like raining and that, throw it in. Take this little thing we got here. We go, we try not to break anything on the way out. But we stick it in this hole right here. And we set it down here and we move up. And other times, Sometimes we set it up here, in this hole, make it harder. So it's like you can raise, just like the death row of this, actually. And sometimes we hang it off the bed. This is where I learned to backslide to, to Unity. This is where I learned to rainy day tricks, new tricks. And welcome to Jay's house. See you later. Now, I don't know what Jay's family life was like growing up, but if my dad came into my bedroom as a kid and I had holes in the walls and was sliding off rails down it, he would have lost his shit. Back in the mid 90s, handrail skating pretty much dominated every major video release. It was just the new thing. People wanted to conquer the biggest one, the longest one. They wanted to do the hardest trick on it. And Jay was at the forefront of that. He had a really good style, a nice trick vocabulary. He had great top soles and unities and porn stars. And he could really handle a kink rail like this one that goes down and along and changes directions. <laughs> He is lacing that with control. It's pretty interesting to look back in these videos because some of the spots that he skates still exist to this day. For example, this kink rail that he skates in San Diego, I'm pretty sure I've seen John Fromm and Jeff Dalnas both hit it in the last 10 years maybe. <laughs> Also, this rail that he does a switch up in San Diego, I'm almost certain it's the same rail that Cody Waikiki and Jake Dotson go absolute hurricane-tastic on. It's also kind of interesting that some of the tricks he was doing would later come to dominate skating towards the end of that decade with like the breakneck tech kind of thing going on when he starts disastering onto kink rails. I don't remember seeing many people do that before him, but fast forward 10 years and everyone was doing it. A Dick is also responsible for one of the most famous skate video quotes among me and my friends when we were about 13, 14 and just absolute nerdy little geeky bladers. I lost count of the amount of times me and my friends would say that every time we split a rail or hit our arsehole in a rail or get a dead leg in a ledge we would be shouting at each other and just laughing our asses off because when you're a teenager you're dumb. 
On top of appearing in a bunch of videos, Jay Dick was also in magazines in both America and in the UK. He had a huge interview in Unity magazine, which includes this photo. Note that it's called a Savannah and not an Alley -oop Unity. Just saying. I read the interview recently for nostalgia purposes and it has not aged well. Turns out when you ask a stone teenager a bunch of questions, they will not give you any sensible answers or anything that's worth reading. Although the photos are cool to look back on. Jay also had the cover of the very first DNA magazine. Now, this magazine wasn't actually released. This isn't like issue one that they sold. This is the issue that they shopped around at trade shows and things like that to get interest from advertisers. But that is a solid front cover. The reason I rediscovered Jay Skating is because I was doing a deep dive on YouTube, doing some research for another video that I'm working on. I ended up watching a bunch of 90s videos and just getting stuck in that teenage mindset again of just how exciting and new everything was. And I remember that Hoax 3 was the first time I was ever scared for someone's life when watching a skate video. Remember when he goes for the top sole and misses and is just dangling off the top? As a kid, I watched that and was just terrified from, I was like, oh my God, he's gonna just fall off the side of that to his death. Looking back on it now and everything that's happened in rollerblading, it doesn't even look that high. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've fallen off higher stuff. But, just the reaction that he had when they pull him over the side or the fact that he's hanging there for so long just made it look so much more dramatic. And the fact that his friend's holding him at the end, I think it's Nick Podrick and Ernie Villarino, and he just looks basically a little bit traumatized by the whole thing. I think that just added to it. And in the Unity interview, he talks about underneath the grass and everything under that rail, there was like bike racks and I think he was saying there was machinery and stuff. So if he'd fallen, he, he might not have died, but he could have got really badly hurt. Back in those days, not many people were getting pro skates. That is until USD came along and gave pro skates to people like John Julio, Dustin Latimer, Arlo, Champion, etc. Before that, the only people getting pro skates were Chris Edwards, who had the Tarmac CE. Although as a teenager, I didn't even know the CE stood for Chris Edwards. I just thought it was the Tarmac skate. Other than that, Oxygen were given pro skates, given Argons to people like Manuel Billaris, Tasha Hodgson, Scott Bentley and stuff like that. Other than that, the only pro product you could get was grind wheels or grind plates. And Jay Dick had a pro grind plate. He had, I would argue in this catalogue, probably the coolest colourway of that season. The only one that can really challenge it is Larry Fagan's glow in the dark grind plate because as a teenager, glow in the dark skate parts, awesome. awesome. In addition to being sponsored by Hardcore Grind Plates, J Dick also rode for Hardline Clothing, and you can see him here wearing the iconic Hardline t shirt. The brand was run by, I'm pretty sure it was run by AJ Jackson, who was a commentator for Ness in the 90s. He was also on Rollerblade. Whoa. Straight from the streets, man. My name is AJ Jackson. Just gonna put my helmet on for the youth, man. Jump this car right here down at the Prince Charles Shopping Center. You know what I'm saying? Make it real fat, Jack. but then I'm pretty sure some serious allegations were made against him in the mid nineties that I'm not going into, but it sounds like he wasn't a very nice person. The turnover of rollerbladers in the mid nineties was incredibly high. In fact, the turnover of rollerbladers was higher than the turnover of McDonald's. I quit. Rollerblading in the mid 90s was in a really transient phase. There was loads of people coming and going because most of the people who were skating were teenagers and they would get older and discover girls or partying or other interests or get jobs or go to college. And so there was a lot of people that would be in the limelight for a really short period of time and then just disappear. And Jay was one of those people. But after diving into all these videos and being the notorious skate geek that I am, I thought I'd do a little bit of investigating and find out what happened to him. Can you help find this man? The first port of call, Eric Schrein. 
Eric was in VG4, he was sponsored by Senna, he would later go on to skate for K2 and Rollerblade and Razors and he skated a bunch of spots that Jay skated in California, they were in similar videos so I wondered if they'd crossed paths. It turns out they had actually skated together a few times but Eric didn't know him very well, isn't really sure when he stopped, thinks it might have been around 1997 and never really heard from him since. The next person I hit up was Larry Fagan, aka Lurch. He's credited with coming up with the Royale to Alley of Topsoul switch up. He was also on Hardcore Grind Plate, so I thought he might have known Jay a little bit better. Turns out he did, and he used to skate with him a fair bit, and they used to hang out together. He believes that Jay stopped skating because he went to college, and the last time he'd heard of him, he was a writer for some company, but they lost touch some years ago. Come on, Lurch! You got it, man! Come on! You got it! The last person I decided to contact was Tracy White. Tracy White was sponsored by Bauer, Hardline, Hardcore, he used to be on Nest, the National Inline Skate Series, and he was in videos with Jay, I think he was in Hoax 3 with him. So he was the last person I contacted just to see if maybe he knew anything more about him, because he actually conducted the interview for Unity Magazine. Tracy really kindly got back to me and it turns out that him and Jay were actually roommates for a while in Redondo Beach, California. They shared an apartment and in his recollection, Jay actually had a serious skating injury where he hit his head and Jay also suffered from ADD and took medication and apparently the head injury either interfered with the medication or he couldn't take it anymore or there was some kind of complications but basically it slowed him down to the point where he just couldn't really skate anymore or had any desire to and apparently Jay is now living in Oxnard, California. Tracy very kindly tried to get in contact with him, he tried to phone him, tried to send him a couple of messages but as yet he's not heard back from him so unfortunately that's where the trail ends but you can go onto his Instagram, which he hasn't updated in a while, and it appears to be a home for his artwork. He has a lot of photographs up on there. But yeah, I am way too much of a blade geek, and it makes me incredibly uncomfortable. I have no idea what led me down this rabbit hole or why I'm even making this video. But yeah, if you're a nerd like me and you started skating in the 90s, hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, they're listed on the screen now. You can join the Patreon account for as little as £3 a month. It's got videos, sneak peeks, photos, ramblings from me, utter nonsense that you're probably not interested in. Thanks for watching and yeah, have another video out soon.